Hi, I'm Terry Furrow with East Shield Technologies, and we're here at Lake Lanier, Georgia today to talk about a revolutionary attic insulation, the new East Shield Attic Energy Barrier. And uh, with me today, I've got Dermot Ennis, who's uh, one of the world's foremost experts on reflective insulation. And, and Dermot, last time you and I were together, we were in Connecticut. We had a whole different thing. It was 30 degrees. Yeah, uh, here we are in, um, in uh, Georgia, uh, where we get a lot more heat. And uh, we've got a big, giant attic, a uh, custom home, and some unique challenges so talk a little bit about that you and I talked about that back when we uh, were in Connecticut that uh, every attic's different and every attic has its own challenges this one brought us a lot of challenges uh, for one you've got a, a beautiful home uh, a large attic it's about 6,500 square feet huge peaks uh, very difficult to insulate uh, the larger the attic the more heat buildup you get in an attic especially in the south so um, we needed to to do things a little differently than we did up in Connecticut Another situation here is this uh, gentleman, because he's high up over top of a lake uh, and was worried about lightning strikes, they put in a, a system, uh, a lightning conductor system, which creates another challenge in that they've run copper wiring throughout the attic. Um, when you're insulating attics of this nature because of the uh, type of construction, you've got to be very careful. What we've done is we've made sure wherever he's got his copper wiring coming down that we've insulated it so that we're not acting as a conductor and um, that should suffice the system not interfere with the system but uh, it's something that we had to look at and it was a challenge uh, when we came into this attic uh, to first look at it. Now I know I see the guys over there with the East Shield Green Team. Uh, the nice thing about uh, homeowners when they decide to put in an East Shield Attic Energy Barrier is all the installers are factory trained, they go through a certification course and as you see these guys uh, do a wonderful, wonderful job of understanding what an attic does uh, and right here I guess they're doing a, they're doing a joist installation correct you've got two uh, two sizes or actually three sizes that we we manufacture e-shield in in this application we're actually utilizing both we're putting the four foot material on the bottom side of the rafters but there's certain areas that you can't fit the four foot material so we'll utilize the 24 inch to go inside the rafters the key is we want to lower the attic temperature attics uh, as I mentioned earlier, this size, you're talking about a 6,500 square foot space. This attic can get up to about 160 to 65 degrees, and that is just a nightmare for air conditioning. Yeah, I think this gentleman said his bills were ten to twelve thousand dollars a year. Well, I'm not and, surprised. And we should be able to, to lower that substantially. Right. Oh yeah. And and you know that's the other thing. When they construct these homes, they're beautiful homes, but they really don't take the attic into consideration. Um, this home, in this attic, they're utilizing one fan. It's an electric fan. I bet if we came up here in the summertime, that attic fan would be on all day long and just drawing energy. Me personally, I would have done a few things differently. Uh, address ventilation a little more and probably utilized solar fans. To me solar fans are the most economical fan. They don't run off any electricity. They'll do the same thing that an electric fan will do and they'll, if you ran in an attic this size, I'd probably run three to four attic fans. Utilizing the uh, uh, e-shield with an attic fan, you're going to lower the attic temperature probably by about 40 to 50 degrees in here. Well that's a lot. That's huge, huge. <clears throat> now I know um, with this attic, he had put uh, he had regular fiberglass in, and in order to cut his utility bills, he added cellulose down here, but still was unable to cut those bills. But we are going to blow in the new uh, E Shield Super Green Eco Insulation, which is now a 100% recyclable recycled blow-in insulation. Mm -hmm. How do the how does the reflective insulation work in conjunction with typical blow-in, and how would it work with the E Shield Eco good, Insulation? Good question. You know, one of the things that we've learned over the last few years is that uh, massive insulation uh, addresses convection and conduction, does very little for radiant heat flow. The problem in, a, in the south is most of our heat gain is radiant heat. So it doesn't matter how much insulation you have in here, you're still going to have an attic space that's 160 degrees. You're trying to utilize, you know, keep the interior at 70 to 75. So that's a big problem. You've got a huge delta T there. So 
by putting in the E shield, you're going to address the radiant heat, but you're also going to do a good job by blowing in more insulation, take care of convection and conduction. One of the challenges that they had in this home because of the, the design of it, they put a lot of unique features in the interior of the home, which creates a lot of problems for insulating. There's a couple areas you, you, you can see back there where they've tried to do the best they could by the blow in and everything, but there's really no insulation over top of the drywall. So I can see where he'd have bills of ten and twelve thousand dollars, and I'm I'm surprised they're actually that low, to be honest with you. Really? Uh, now I know when we were in Connecticut, we kind of focused in on a floor install. It was a right. thirty-two degrees, more uh, more uh, heating days than cooling days, mm -hmm. and in that case, we actually did both. We did rafter and floor. Correct. So talk a little bit about how we would what a floor install would do in a more northern climate. Well, what happens is is you got to understand most attics are, are ventilated spaces. So by putting the uh, e shield up in a rafter, you're going to do very little for wintertime uh, heat loss. So what we do is in the north, we'll actually lay the material over top of the existing insulation, keep the heat into the home, but also put it on the rafters because we still have to address the summertime heat gain. Most homes today are air conditioned, so we need to address that. What a lot of people have started to do with the East Shield is they'll actually, in the north, is they'll opt for putting it just over top of the existing insulation and then later on come back with the rafter application. Well, I know we, we're pretty excited. We just came out with the East Shield 15,000, which is twice as much fiberglass right. as the East Shield 11,000. Right. And most of us feel and want to get your thoughts on putting a thicker blanket down on the floor and then maybe using each at 11,000 when we do the rafter install. Well, that's going to do, that's going to help a little bit. It is going to help. It's going to be a great product for up north because then you're going to do a lot better job of taking care of that convective heat flow. And that's why we designed that product. That's fantastic. Again, and one other thing I wanted to address was there's a lot of products out there and we're seeing them that uh, bubble pack type products and things of that nature. And what people have to be concerned about is those products were designed originally as condensation bearers. They were not designed for attic applications. E-Shield is the only product that was designed specifically for attics because it doesn't create a vapor barrier. It's got a 13.1 perm rating, which is a terrible perm rating, which is a good thing in this application. Um, with these bubble pack products, you've got a product that was designed as a condensation barrier. It can cause a whole lot of problems in an attic. Last thing we want up here is moisture, which causes Correct. mildew. I mean, Correct. that's, that's well, Mold. Mold and is mold a big, well. you know, they, they compound themselves. All of a sudden you get moisture trap moisture, then it gets into the insulation, then they, it causes mold problems. You've got to rip everything out. So you've got to be very careful when you're choosing an attic insulation. Now I know um, back in the 80s there was a, a, a product that came out called Radiant Barrier. Correct. And today I know uh, one of our big challenges is sometimes uh, consumers or even uh, contractors still only know about Radiant Barriers and a multi layer thermal reflective insulation is, is like apples and oranges to a radiant barrier. Apples and oranges. First and foremost, uh, a reflective insulation is an insulation. It has an R value to it. A radiant barrier is basically just two pieces of aluminum. Okay. The best analogy I've heard uh, is comparing a radiant barrier to a single pane window, yeah. whereas a reflective insulation is a Lowy window. We all know Lowy windows are the better window. That's what we want. They're more energy efficient. Same case here with a radiant barrier versus a reflective insulation. If you look at a radiant barrier, it's, as I said, it's a single layer of aluminum, whereas a reflective insulation is two layers of aluminum with a core inside. In this case, we're utilizing fiberglass, and that creates the dead air space. And the reason we do that, we do it for a number of reasons. One, it gives us R value, but two, there was a lot of problems with the radiant barriers in the north where they were putting it in homes, and what was happening is they were getting frost in the wintertime. And same as your window, your single pane window, if you've ever had a cold day, you'll see frost on it, yeah, yeah. same thing. Well, what that does is that seals it up, causes moisture problems, which in turn gets the condensation into the fiberglass, which causes your mold problems. With the East Shield, that's not going to happen because it works like a Lowy window. Well, I know uh, the administration now has been big on these tax credits. It's uh, inspiring. Yeah. Uh, each of us gets a little bit of money of this uh, TARP program to put in our own homes. Correct. But I noticed that the Department of Energy required radiant barriers to state that they do not qualify for the they energy tax credit. And but 
uh, East Shield does. Tell us a little bit what why East Shield qualifies yeah. where a radiant barrier does not. Again, I touched on it briefly. Is because a radiant barrier does not have an R value. In order to qualify for the fifteen hundred dollar tax credit, you must have a thermal value. East Shield has been tested to the ASTM specs. Does have an R value, so that's why it qualifies. Whereas a radiant barrier will not qualify. Just like a low E window will qualify, right. but a but a single pane window will not. It has to do with energy efficiency. Well, we've been in Connecticut. We've done this video here in Georgia. I guess maybe our next stop will be uh, Hawaii. Yeah, or <laughs> I'd love to go there. I, you know, I just came back from Europe, and and that's the one thing is uh, I can tell you is in Europe, uh, reflective insulations are widespread. Um, uh, France, for instance, they have the uh, lowest uh, per capita use uh, of uh, energy. Their their kilowatt usage is the lowest in the world, in the Western world. They utilize reflective insulations and have been for probably about 15 years now. They, they outsell us here in the United States for such a small country, three to one. Well, hopefully uh, with East Shield Technologies and uh, with the East Shield uh, 11,000, we'll be able to change that here and uh, uh, soon, I hope. Slowly but surely, we're seeing it. More and more people are becoming aware of it. I think the, the web has a lot to do with that. Again, people have to be careful. They have to, to really do their research and understand the, the, uh, the, the dangers uh, of using the improper products in the attic. You've got to utilize a product that was designed specifically for an attic. And I would say installation is a, is a big part of that and, and having crews that are trained yeah. that understand what goes on. These attics are dangerous places. I know you and I have been walking around here and you have to be yeah. very, yeah. very careful. Uh, thanks for your time today. We look forward to catching up with you again. I'm Terry Furrow from East Shield Technologies. Thanks a lot.